god, it's 2018 probably when you're watching this. <laughs> 2017 was the year that I discovered booktube and honey, I'm, I'm still obsessed. I'm obsessed. So I think I found booktube like February, March-ish. I've loved it because there's nothing I love more than like bitch a Sunday afternoon and you know like a used bookstore or just like the the book section at like Goodwill or Salvation Army that is oh that is my hallelujah my Goodreads goal challenge which I started in like March or February was to read 24 books and I surpassed that I think I've read 27 right now yeah, so some of them I don't count, but um, there are books that I read and that's all that matters. I thought I'd start with my books that I own that I read this year. So let's do it. Uh, first, I'm just gonna go in rainbow order. First book I read, Walking the Red Road on Chicanismo. So, uh, Walking the Red Road describes someone who follows the native worldview of the Americas, distinct from Christianity or any other religion. So this is basically like a memoir uh, from uh, Isidro Ramon Macias, uh, which I guess he, well, he was a Chicano activist. He currently lives his life um, on the Red Road. This also includes uh, a few plays. The plays were just shit. And, uh, also, the, the book was questionable at times, too. I did not give this a very good rating. I would not recommend this. I managed to finish it. No, wait, let me put that back. Okay, next. Born Confused. I've talked this about this book way too much, and I reread it, and I just... I understand why it was my favorite book as a teen. It's just so... Uh, she's... Dimple is so relatable. She encounters a drag queen somewhere towards the last third of the book, and she and this uh, guy who dresses up as a drag queen just have like this amazing relationship, and it's this book is so freaking poetic, and just the descriptions are just legendary. Love Born Confused. Uh, author is Tanuja Desai Hidier. Her graphic novel that just about almost made me cry. Pedro on me, which I got for 75 cents. I always leave the sticker on. Pedro on me, friendship, loss, and what I learned. So this is by Judd Winnick. So I guess they were on the real world together. Um, I never watched the real world. I don't really know what it is, honestly. But it's about this guy, best friends with another guy that had AIDS. And it just shows his story. And it's so sad, honestly. But it's good. If you like crying. <laughs> okay, here's another thing I read. So this is Quesadillas um, by Juan Pablo Villalobos. I didn't really like this, honestly. It felt like there wasn't a point to what I was reading. The end is, okay, like the last few pages are a different genre. I don't understand. There's got to be some like deep layer to this that I don't know about. And I'm only saying that because I saw Roxanne Gay rated this on a Goodreads five stars and was like, this is amazing satire, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, bitch, where? I'm kind of pissed that I didn't like this. I'm definitely going to get rid of this. But for now, it's, it's giving me a nice green in my shelf. So that's why I'm keeping it. Who read these? Who read these as a kid? Oh my God, I was obsessed with these two. The Olsen Twins. So I read the first one in the Two of a Kind series. It's a twin thing. So like there was a show, Two of a Kind, but for some reason it was like, maybe it was on a channel that my mom didn't let me watch or maybe my mom watched part of it and like they were mean to the parents and so she didn't let me watch it. But um, these books are basically like one of the episodes of this show just written down also you could win a visit to the set of two of a kind i mean mary kate and ashley details inside bitch the mems the mems this used to belong to Lindsay. Lindsay bastardo i don't know Lindsay, you're a whore wherever you are i just finished this so this is um guide to astrology so this is just like a pretty just basic i've been really interested in astrology lately i am a taurus through and through. I love judging people based on it, like just finding out someone's birthday and then finding out that they're a Gemini and just automatically hating them. Like, I just love that. I also read this Zodiac Star Force, so this is kind of like a 
comic or graphic novel about, oh my god, the Zodiac. <laughs> see, see how obsessed I became with astrology like this year? But yeah, it's an elite group of teenage girls with magical powers who have sworn to protect our planet against dark creatures. As long as they can get out of class. <laughs> I really like this. It has every page is colored and it's really cute. It's cute. This book I read for school, uh, Between the World and Me by Tani Hisi Coates. I suck and I, I haven't really read too many books on race. That's definitely a thing that I need to do in um, 2018. That's one of my goals. But I usually get my books from used bookstores and stuff and I never really noticed, but yeah, I don't really see many books about race in, you know, thrift stores or used bookstores or anything. So this is a book, um, it's just like an emotional book. It's a like, book where a dad is telling his son, this is the world that you have to grow up in. And you, and he admits that I can't sit there and say, you know, it's going to be okay because he doesn't know. This book just makes me so mad at this country that I'm living in, this godforsaken piece of shit. Okay, I read a couple more books, which I'll put the covers up there. Bright Shiny Morning by James Frey. I liked it, it was kind of meh, definitely not as good as A Million Little Pieces. Um, but I did a full review on that. Uh, I'm like checking them off as I say them. Down the Rabbit Hole by Holly Madison, I read, I did a full review on that, uh, I did a whole video. <laughs> uh, Hugh Hefner, I'm spitting on your grave. Patooey, patooey, bitch. Okay, so next book I read was Gotcher Gotcher. That's how the guy said it on the audiobook. By Vivek Shanbon. So this book was really quick. It was like, uh, I think it's only like a hundred and something pages. There's no plot, really. It's just a guy telling, talking about what is what happened when his family went from being really poor to really rich and kind of like the dynamics that changed within their family just because of money like there's nothing to highlight in this book you know there's nothing not any memorable quotes or anything it was just a really just like simply written book but nothing was really you know popping out to me as being like a memorable book but the ending gave it a little more you know chutzpah or whatever. If it's not gonna be poetic, at least let it be deep as fuck, you know? Um, and it just wasn't like deep enough to like, you know? Like, it's about the journey, not the destination. Okay, oh my God, this one I'm so excited about. I think I gave this like, this was like a four and a half star for me. Um, Tampa by Alyssa Nutting. <laughs> this lady, we never understand why she is the way that she is. But this teacher, Celeste, she's like 26 years old maybe, and her whole life she's been attracted to 14-year-old boys. Not 13-year-old boys, not 15-year-old boys, 14-year-old boys, okay, 14. So her whole life she's been studying to become a teacher, a middle school teacher, and she finally, this is, this is where the book starts, is like her first day of her first year teaching. All of her, you know, fantasies, all of, all of her, uh, you know, experiences with 14 year old boys, you know, dis descriptive, disgusting. It is pretty freaking disturbing. The shenanigans, the wild shenanigans she gets into. But oh my God, no, seriously, it's fucked up. Definitely one of the most fucked up things that I read, but let me get to the second fucked up thing that I read, because I think I only read two. I think Tampa was definitely one. Ta Tampa was the better one. So I read Snuff by Chuck Palahniuk. So this book was about a porn star that wanted to break a record by having sex with 600 men in a row. This porn star, before she got famous, gave away a baby um, and basically a huge portion of the men that came in for this casting call are men saying, hey, I'm your, I'm your son. Like, it all adds up, I'm your son. And all these men think that they're her long lost son, um, and yet they're going in on a casting call to have sex with her, which would be their mother, you know, as far as they're concerned. So that was just so fucked up. God, 
this guy, Chuck, Chuck Polinick, I never want to meet him. He sounds like a terrible person. Um, because who the fuck thinks of this shit? Who the fuck? I can't. I also read Animal Farm by George Orwell. <laughs> um, so this one is another one where it's like simply written and there's not like much description or whatever, but see Animal Farm is an exception where I'm just like, okay, but it's deep and it makes up for that. I think about it all the time. So um, yeah, it's good, it's classic. I think I read it in like seventh grade or something in middle school. I don't think I got it then, but who gets books that they read in middle school, you know? So yeah, I really liked Animal Farm looking back on it. Um, oh my gosh, I forgot about this. I also read The Hobbit, I gave this four and a half out of five stars. I don't know, like it was probably a five star read for me. But um, I had never read Tolkien, starting off with The Hobbit, and I loved it. This is probably one of my favorite books uh, that I read this year. I feel like I'm a hobbit. Like, I love his little round door with a little doorknob in it. The narrator just be like, oh, uh, Bilbo found a map. Bilbo loves maps. He loves looking at maps. And I'm just like, oh, Bilbo's so cute. He loves looking at maps. You know, it's just like, I just wanted to pinch his little fucking cheeks. Oh, uh, another book I read that um, I got from the library, The Rose That Grew From Concrete. So this is a book by Tupac Shakur. Um, duh, legend. I just love being in his head. He's like, he had some beautiful lines. Some of the poems sucked. It kind of was just, you know, like a, like a diary and I just liked reading that. Oh, next book, Dimple My Rishi. Loved it. <laughs> I also uh, read Julie and Julia by Julie Powell. Um, this book sucked. I never saw the movie. I had such high hopes for this because like it's like a national bestseller. They basically made it sound like she's gonna have a spiritual experience. Nah, nope. It was literally a book about her cooking. I was like, I'm waiting for the metaphor. I was like, maybe when we get to the end, maybe we'll get like how much this affected her or some shit, but like, no. Also, I, I read it through audiobook and the author read it and she was just like, she just had that voice where it's just like everything I'm saying is so funny. I just couldn't, I couldn't. I think I gave that like two stars or something like, ugh, God. Okay, next book I read was Why Not Me by Mindy Kaling. I love Mindy Kaling. Uh, oh my God, her on The Office is just iconic. She, like, if I was a character, I'm Kelly, bitch. She talked about, like, her love life a little bit, which she didn't, I don't, which I don't remember her doing in her first book. More specifically, she talked about one relationship that she had. And, um, I mean, it was, like, interesting, but it didn't, like, lead to anything. It was just like, oh, and there's a little fling I had. And I was like, mm. Okay. She uh, talked about, you know, sex scenes and kissing other actors, uh, which I thought was a interesting, the most interesting chapter. Uh, and then she kind of, I guess, did a little bit of fiction almost. She wrote a whole chapter in the form of like emails. And so that was kind of weird. I mean, I like Mindy, but yeah, I only, I only gave that one three three stars. Uh, oh, next, Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. Um, I didn't like this book as much as other people. I mean, no, I liked it. I liked it. But I guess I just, it didn't blow my mind or anything, I guess. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that I never thought about. I like the chapters that she wrote uh, on the books and movies that I had read and seen, like when she was talking about Hunger Games, I was like, okay, I know what she's talking about now, but that was like 10% of the time, and the other 90% she's talking about some movie I've never watched or some show I've never watched, some book I've never read. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm trying to get the gist of what you're saying, you know? And of course she always has a good point. And I know a lot of people didn't like the parts about her personal life, like her uh, uh, being a teacher or her, uh, playing Scrabble, but I actually loved those parts. Just remember my favorite essay was about her reading Sweet Valley High um, and how she loved those books and she stands those books and uh, how she knows that they're just complete trash from her childhood, but how like she would like die for any one of those characters. I started school this past semester. I didn't read much during school like for fun. The most I could do was I would listen to 
like children's audiobooks on the way to work to school. So one of them that I found at my library was Star Girl by Jerry Spinelli. This used to be my favorite book in um, elementary school. Uh, favorite book other than Harry Potter, like obviously. But I loved Star Girl. I wanted to be her so bad. She's probably why I know, like I have like a ukulele and know how to play the ukulele. Um, she had a pet rat. She was just like she's she's the manic pixie dream girl like for kids they go out to the desert and she teaches him how to meditate but they never say the word meditate uh and it's just like oh my god this is like a little deep like oh my god for a, for me reading it in the fourth grade you know i can totally understand why i loved it so much another thing that i read this one was more high school but uh the boyfriend list by e lockhart i was shocked to find out that e lockhart is like a really big like ya uh author now and no one ever mentions um you know boyfriend list or i think she also wrote fly on the wall which i read and loved in high school but like she's got all kinds of new books now like we are we were liars or some shit but yeah boyfriend list by e lockhart was honestly like it sucked <laughs> i used to love this book back then and it was not good the main girl wasn't really likable uh, she has a panic attack and then uh she starts going to a therapist and the therapist asks her to, you know, make a list of all of the boys that have ever been in her life romantically. Guess what happens with the list? Guess, it's a YA book. Uh, another book I read was called Gulp, Adventures on the Elementary, Elementary Canal by Mary Roach. And Mary Roach is a science author. She's wrote, written a lot of books and all of them have like names like Gulp. Uh, she has a, uh, uh, one about sex called bonk. She has a one about dead bodies called stiff. So she's just like mm, One one word one ugly sounding word bonk Gulp, you know, I thought this was okay. I think I gave it three stars. I really liked the chapter about farts and poop um, But of course that's that was towards the end because we're going through the body. I did like um, learning about like the science of food a little bit. The rest of the day I was like eating hot Cheetos and being like, wow, some scientists like really, they calculated how much crunch, how it feels in your mouth. Like all that is calculated in some, some lab. I really liked learning that part of it. It really made eating hot Cheetos a different experience. But um, the middle part was, uh, you know, whatever, stomach, stomach gas is whatever. But yeah, once we got to the ass and the rectum, then it got interesting. I kind of wish she just like made a book called Fart and then uh, just talked about the farting parts. But uh, I liked learning about the front end and then the rear end. Second to last one. Woo. Okay. Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. The facts in here about octopuses are crazy, which by the way, it's octopuses, not octopi. That's what this bitch said in the book. I'm listening to her. I think she knows what the fuck she's talking about. It's so interesting and she talks about touching them and like the way that they feel, the way that they act, their personalities. Like if you eat octopus at a sushi restaurant, like you're going to hell. I feel like the meat of the book was in the beginning when she meets that first octopus. Then eventually like more octopuses come in her life and you know, there's more of that. But it, like nothing was as meaningful and beautiful as that first relationship with the, the first octopus. So I felt like it could have just been about that first one. It could have been an essay. I just kind of liked more of the um, the spiritual side of it, I guess, where she was like, uh, it really taught me about humanity or like whatever. You know, like that kind of side of it I enjoyed, which was at the beginning and it wasn't really, it didn't really like carry through the book. It was just like at the beginning and then it was kind of like, Oh, then I met this octopus and then this one and blah, 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 blah. And then the end. It could have been like a really good, really like poignant essay. Um, but instead it was kind of like a book that overstayed its welcome a little bit. Um, but I still gave it four stars. I really liked, I liked the book. I have been talking for 56 minutes. I'm somehow gonna edit this down. My favorite book that I read this year was Undeniable colon, Evolution and Science of Creation by none other than Bill Nye, the science guy. Oh yeah, girl. I got this audiobook at the library and it's an audiobook 
and it's Bill Nye. So it was so good. It was funny. He added personality in everything that he said. The book itself, I want to get it, a physical copy of it. He talked about the ocean. He talked about evolution. He talked about space. He talked about planets. He talked about humans creationism like he debunked that within like the first like the first quarter of the book i was like bloop okay now i got my argument if any christian tries to come for that ass he knows what he's talking about he's got the receipts and he really is the science guy trademark if you have any interest in science whatsoever i'm not like a science book whore or anything like that i'm not like that bitch yet but i feel like this book is a great like first book to start and start to get into the science world because not only are you getting like a really accessible, fun narrator, I obviously I'm recommending the audiobook, but I'm sure the written book is fine as well. Um, but not only are you getting the super fun like nostalgia of Bill Nye, you're also getting a taste of everything science related. So then right from there you can go on to read um another book um about whichever thing interested you the most so that was my favorite book of the year oh goals for the year um read more books about uh religion read more books about race also my goal is to read all of these i'm guilty i'll just go to the library and i'll get all kinds of books i'll read those and then i have a shit ton of unread here so my goal is to not read any physical books from the library and just to actually read these but obviously audiobooks like i'll i'll get from hoopla or overdrive or whatever i love books and so i really hope i can keep this channel up because i freaking love reading so um thank you guys all for watching and have an amazing year and i'll see you hopefully soon bye